Good day, everyone. I want to welcome everyone participating in Skyscraper 2020. And I want to thank our sponsor, Verone Vehicles, for hosting this event. I am Martin Perrier, CEO of John Deere Mobility. I have a long history of aerospace experience with a long career with Bell Helicopter on aircraft design and certification. I also had the opportunity to work at Triumph Aerospace Structures uh, before uh, joining uh, John Air Mobility, and I'm happy to be here uh, today. I am co-sharing this present presentation with uh, Simon Bersenio. Simon, would you like to please introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Martin, and uh, good day to everyone. Uh, excited to, to be here, and thank you uh, to Verone Vehicles again for, for putting this, this uh, fantastic event uh, so maybe a brief introduction here on myself. You know, I've got a personal connection with, with obviously with Latin America and Verón vehicles. Um, I'm, I'm actually from Venezuela and I've got family in Colombia. Uh, and so this, this opportunity to, to really explore, you know, urban air mobility in, in Latin America is, is very uh, near and dear to my, my heart. So uh, prior to joining Jaunt, um, I was in academia and part of the Georgia Tech research faculty in aerospace engineering and spent uh, over a decade doing research specifically in aircraft design and particularly looking at disruptive technologies like electric propulsion and autonomy and seeing how these technologies with new aircraft configurations really create a new opportunity for mobility uh, for people in, in, in urban and non-urban areas. And so just uh, briefly here to sort of introduce the vision that we have at John Air Mobility and, and then get into our, our, our technology, our aircraft, uh, we really see that, you know, leveraging that airspace above these cities and what we call the third dimension in a more efficient, environmentally friendly and cost-saving way will be, will be the future. And will allow people to fly over urban areas, you know, at high speeds, and potentially uh, save a lot of time and shorten commute times. And inevitably, there, there, there's also an opportunity here to connect communities uh, in in various parts of the world and urban areas, uh, which will hopefully also generate that that economic growth. And we see this opportunity as a result of uh, a, a host of technologies that have rapidly matured uh, over the last decade or more uh, and are having a major impact on the growth of this market, this urban air mobility and advanced air mobility market. Uh, two two uh, particular technologies are the energy storage or the battery industry that we see closing the gap in specific energy uh, requirements needed for electric aviation. We see that already in the automotive industry. We're, we're hoping that, that in aviation, you know, that, that becomes a reality too. And then likewise, electric motors, which we really see as the embodiment of simplicity uh, with, uh, you know, having only one moving part and in, in, in mounted on a set of bearings are, is an example of uh, the technology that's really going to enable these aircraft uh, of the future. So with that in mind, uh, I wanna switch back to Martin here and give him an opportunity to uh, introduce our aircraft. Yeah, thank you, Simon. That was a, a great introduction to, uh, to some of the work that we're doing on the, on the aircraft side. Uh, you know, we have a uh, unique configuration that we have developed and, you know, we really took some time to examine, you know, the technologies that are out there to address you know, the challenges with you know, developing all electric uh, aircraft. And so we took the, the attributes of a sailplane, one of the most efficient you know, aircraft for, for cruise flight. And we married that technology up with the, uh, the capabilities of a helicopter, which is the most efficient you know, air vehicle for, for vertical flight uh, type of operations. And by combining uh, these two technologies, we created, you know, the jaunt journey, you know, specifically targeting uh, the, the market for urban, urban, urban air mobility and, and the air taxi uh, market. Uh, we call this technology the reduced rotor operating speed aircraft, uh, ROSA. 
um, as a result. And you know what you're seeing right now on this screen is is that technology. Um, it does combine again, you know, the features of a fixed wing airplane and a rotary wing airplane into a highly optimized and very efficient aircraft configuration. So how does it work? Um, you know, basically, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the aircraft has the ability to operate um, similar to a helicopter and the fact that it can take off uh, and land vertically. Um, what you'll see on the screen is the rotor system that is highlighted in green. Um, this rotor system, you know, allows again, the aircraft to take off and climb to a, a cruise attitude. And once it reaches its cruise attitude, it simply uh, converts into what we call airplane mode. The rotor slows down in flight and the lift is transferred to the wing system. And while you're cruising, you know, the aircraft, you know, behaves uh, very, very similar to a conventional airplane. Uh, the fact that the rotor is slowed down in flight, you no longer, you know, hear any rotor noise that you typically hear with a helicopter. Also, the traditional uh, loads and vibration, you know, associated with, with the helicopter disappears. Um, and you, so you end up with a very smooth uh, flight um, and then as you reach your, your destination, you know, the aircraft uh, again uh, converts back into what we call, you know, the, the helicopter flight mode and, you know, descends and lands um, like, a, like a typical uh, helicopter would. So we have developed, uh, you know, a really safe uh, and quiet uh, configuration as a result of uh, mirroring these technologies. And uh, this aircraft is uh, very, very efficient, you know, from a flight operations perspective. Here's a, a little short video clip that shows the operation of the aircraft. And if you focus on top of the aircraft, the, the tilting mask allows you to maintain a level attitude of, of, the, uh, of the aircraft itself, providing a level of comfort to the, the passengers Typically, uh, when a helicopter takes off, it has to point the, the no nose down to the ground to, uh, to get the thrust vector in the right orientation. And we manage that by tilting uh, the mass of the aircraft itself. And it provides some additional performance capability uh, over and above a traditional uh, helicopter. Again, you can see the, the video play through again. So this technology has been under development uh, for nearly two decades. Um, we do have a uh, technology demonstrator uh, that we use to you know, develop the, the capability of, of the rotor system itself. And one of the technology barriers that we had to overcome is slowing the, the rotor down in flight Traditional helicopters operate at a fixed, you know, RPM. This uh, particular aircraft, uh, we have a capability to vary the rotor RPM over our large operating range, and maintaining, you know, stability and control of the rotor system is what makes this particular uh, technology uh, viable. And uh, we have, you know, secured uh, several patents associated with that particular uh, technology. In the video image, uh, you can see uh, that one of the blades is uh, painted you know, orange for visibility. And the fact that you can see you know, that blade you know, rotate around you know, indicates that the, that the speed of the rotor system has uh, slowed down you know, significantly compared to a traditional helicopter. Yep. Thanks, Martin. Uh, so I wanted to really, uh, you know, talk about, you know, some of the technical attributes and, and performance uh, capabilities and the way we really see, you know, the best way to sort of think about this configuration is summed up in three ways. It's efficient, it's safe, and it's quiet. 
So from a performance standpoint, you know, let's let's look at at, at the the various uh, capabilities. So we can transport four passengers and a pilot, and we we're also looking at variant designs where we'll modify the interior of the aircraft. In some cases, looking at the cargo market, where we are able to easily you know convert the inside to be able to handle that standard pallet size uh, for cargo applications. Likewise. Uh, there are, you know, we can use these conf this configuration for air ambulance with with only some minor changes to the interior cabin and and, and obviously thinking about some of the uh, specialized equipment that that would go into uh, a medical transport. Using the battery technology uh, that that will be available to us over the next two to three years. Our aircraft can uh, fly in excess of 130 kilometers at speeds over 280 kilometers per hour and really giving us the ability to operate uh, several mission legs uh, under a single charge and in some of the emerging markets. And here I've, I've, I'm showing you know, some of the, the markets uh, in Latin America that we believe are uh, definitely primed for uh, urban air mobility in the future. The range and endurance capabilities are really only going to increase as uh, battery storage capacities mature. Uh, and, and likewise, we are considering, you know, hybrid electric uh, architectures as well for certain types of applications. So moving on uh, to our sort of next key attributes, and, and really this is the greatest uh, attribute of this aircraft, is really the, its inherent ability to perform a safe controlled landing under a complete power loss. And as Martin pointed out, this is because of the novel design of that main rotor. Uh, you know, we have specific uh, uh, weights that are, uh, located on the tips of the of the main rotor and when that rotor is spun up there's a substantial amount of rotational energy that's stored in that rotor system and in the event of a power loss the main rotor will continue to spin very fast and with this stored up rotational energy will be able to fly safely uh, to a controlled landing and just to give you an idea of uh, you know, how much uh, available space and, and time a pilot would have, uh, the figure on the right here from a height of about 300 meters, the pilot has over 13 square kilometers of, of landing area. Uh, and this is quite impressive uh, when you think of an aircraft that again has uh, no uh, power uh, remaining in order to perform that safe landing. And this auto rotation, uh, capability has been performed numerous times, uh, and this is what we refer back to the jaunt technology demonstrator that, that you saw earlier. And finally, as you know, the, the acoustic signature of VTOL aircraft will have a tremendous amount of impact on public acceptance, and that's why we give it such great importance. The ability to slow the main rotor uh, of our aircraft exponentially decreases the noise during cruise. In addition, during takeoff and landing, the low rotor tip speeds and the low disc loading on the rotor generates a substantially lower acoustic signature compared to conventional helicopters. And one way to think about this is to think about how loud this aircraft is, is really to compare it to a small delivery truck as it makes its, uh, you know, as it's driving down the street in front of your house. So shifting gears here, I'm gonna pass it back over to Martin to kind of give you wrap up the aircraft overview and kind of give you a, a feel for some of the technologies that we have on board. Yeah, I'll just take a few minutes to, to kind of talk about some of the technologies on the, uh, the aircraft itself. So we are, uh, you know, developing a, an advanced, you know, fly-by-wire system on the aircraft to uh, assist in the uh, the flight modes of the aircraft and really allow a, a pilot to seamlessly, you know, fly this aircraft, uh, you know, from the, the vertical takeoff uh, capabilities to the transition into an airplane and, and back again. And it'll be done seamlessly, you know, through these advanced control laws using this very advanced uh, fly-by-wire system. 
Uh, this fly-by-wire system provides a level of redundancy that you would typically find in a commercial aircraft. Again, you know, improving on the, the level of safety and the design itself. Uh, we are, uh, you know, developing uh, uh, this aircraft for single pilot uh, operations. Uh, we certainly want the, the ability of a, of a pilot, uh, just a single pilot, to actually fly in all sorts of adverse weather. And so it will be uh, rated, you know, for what we call a single pilot IFR uh, condition, which means that you can fly in adverse weather conditions without any issues uh, whatsoever. As I mentioned earlier, the, the tilting mass feature uh, provides uh, some really good uh, capabilities in the aircraft. Uh, one of the concerns with small aircraft is how you load that aircraft with passengers and baggage. This tilting mass allows us to have a very large fore and aft CG range and what we call indiscriminate loading in the aircraft. So you can load passengers any, anywhere in the aircraft with their baggage and not be concerned about uh, being outside of the approved uh, flight envelope from a, from a CG perspective. But it also allows us to maintain a level attitude of the aircraft itself. So as you transition you know, from takeoff to cruise flight, the aircraft you know, remains at a level attitude um, in conjunction with a active elevator on the aircraft. Uh, you'll notice that we actually have, uh, you know, dual sets of propellers on each wing. Uh, it serves uh, a couple of different purposes. Obviously, for up and away flying uh, in airplane mode, you know, the propellers provide, you know, the necessary thrust for cruise flight. But again, as you slow down and you start your, you know, vertical type of operations, your low speed operations, those propellers actually provide, you know, yaw control uh, in hover and at low air speeds. If you're familiar with uh, helicopters, uh, helicopters have uh, tail rotors that provide that yaw control or any torque control of the main rotor. And so our propellers actually serve that same function. A tail rotor is a significant noise generator on a, on a helicopter. And so we, quote, remove the tail rotor from the aircraft and are using the propellers to provide that yaw control for, for the aircraft, eliminating a very large noise source. And again, from a safety perspective, you can lose uh, any pair of propellers on, on the left or the right side of the aircraft and still have adequate uh, control functionality of the aircraft. Again, adding a level of safety uh, to, uh, to this particular configuration. One of the, the key enabling technologies uh, in order to produce this uh, aircraft at a reasonable cost and at the volumes that are gonna be required, we have capitalized on using uh, thermoplastics for the structural design of the aircraft. And this is a technology that Triumph Aerospace Structures is developing, where you're going to be able to hop press form very large structural components and use um, induction welding technology to weld these components together through uh, highly automated systems in order to you know, drive costs out of the, the aircraft and build in you know, inherent quality uh, into the aircraft. Thermoplastics offer a lot of benefits over conventional, you know, metallic structures and even uh, conventional uh, composites that are in use today. I um, uh, wanted to give you a, a little bit of a, a sense of what the jaunt journey experience might look like for a passenger, uh, so to speak, from door to door. You know, we're working closely with, with operators and ecosystem partners like Verone Vehicles uh, to really uh, provide, you know, these services and make that customer experience really seamless. What you see here is, is uh, New York City, and we're really wanting to show that leveraging, you know, the existing infrastructure, in this case, heliport infrastructure in urban areas is going to be really critical to be able to get this uh, going early and, and get it off the ground. 
this is a, a small animation showing, you know, what, what a passenger might expect as they go from booking their trip, getting potentially picked up and transferred to a vertiport, going through a comfortable and quiet experience uh, with the jaunt journey aircraft all the way through to their final destination. And so again, our, our goal is really to integrate with as much existing urban infrastructure in the, in the near term. Uh, we've designed our aircraft and systems to ensure we can operate under existing operational rules, uh, such as part 135. Passing it back to Martin. Um, so we've done a lot of work on the uh, planning aspects of the program itself and, you know, having a, a lot of experience with the aircraft, you know, development and certification and understanding that entire, you know, design process and test process uh, that's required for certification in actually building a manufacturing plan to, to produce that aircraft. We have uh, you know, laid out a highly detailed plan. Uh, what's depicted here is a very simplified plan of, of this particular program. We are looking at building a full-scale pre-production aircraft um, and flying that particular aircraft in 2023 uh, per our plan today. And uh, in parallel, the engineering team will be, you know, developing uh, the aircraft that will, you know, take us into uh, the certification program. Typically, your pre-production, you know, aircraft has immature systems that need further, you know, development and refinement. And that typically happens, you know, during the, um, the demonstration phase of the aircraft itself. We will be entering, you know, that certification activities in that 2023 timeframe with a series of aircraft uh, addressing, you know, various aspects of, of the certification program. Uh, we will be, you know, going into, you know, uh, what we call low rate production in that 2025 time period. And so when we do certify uh, in 2026, our factory will be ramped up and ready to deliver uh, aircraft to customers in that early 2027 timeframe. Uh, we do intend to uh, certify under existing uh, certification rules. Uh, this particular aircraft uh, is classified as a rotorcraft. And so part 29 under existing certification standards um, at the FAA and EASA and Transport Canada and AMAC um, all have you know, certification uh, requirements that are extremely similar to uh, one another. And so we see a, uh, a clear path to uh, certification uh, because the existing rules are in place today. And fortunately, our tier one aerospace suppliers that are supplying you know, major systems on this particular aircraft know how to certify under you know, these existing rules. And we believe we have a, uh, a clear path, as I mentioned earlier, to, to certification as a result of that. Uh, we've listed here a couple of our major uh, team uh, mates, uh, partners, if you will. Uh, BAE Systems is developing uh, a, a large part of the, the aircraft systems, all the way from the battery systems and high voltage power distribution, light control computers, and they are integrating those systems uh, on the aircraft. And they'll be working you know, very closely to Triumph Aerospace Structures who will be doing the, the airframe design and the uh, integration of these systems uh, into the aircraft itself. Uh, we have a manufacturing uh, facility uh, located here in the, the Dallas-Fort Worth area that will be building our, our prototype aircraft. We have some other key uh, suppliers uh, that are on board, uh, but we are not prepared to uh, announce those particular suppliers at this time but that will be forthcoming here in the near future. Thanks, Martin. Yep. So switching gears uh, sort of outside of the aircraft to the ecosystem and wanted to start by saying, you know, this is, this is really, we recognize the importance of, of the, the air mobility ecosystem and, and working with expert partners across the ecosystem to ensure that we will be ready for uh, ready to provide customers, you know, a safe, efficient, and reliable transportation option. 
And because of that, there's still a lot of work to be done uh, to ensure that air mobility operations in a few years uh, will happen safely, efficiently, and, and with the reliability that we see in today's commercial aviation industry. So a key focus you know, for us is understanding the requirements uh, that will be needed uh, to, to uh, have uh, build out the physical infrastructure, like fast charging, what that impacts, how that impacts utility providers. Another one is the maintenance repair overhaul uh, activities and supportability of the aircraft to ensure that that aircraft is supported uh, for the high tempo of operations that it will see uh, once it's in operations. And so we, we've started to get the ball rolling uh, at Jaunt with a set of partner companies, in this case here, PSNS and Price. Uh, PSNS is a, a global uh, architecture and engineering firm with expertise uh, specifically in, in the air, air mobility market. And Price as well has a pedigree and wealth of knowledge in developing uh, life cycle cost uh, models for urban uh, air mobility application. And again, the economics here are going to be key to have uh, a viable business model for for operators. And so, you know, we we've seen how important uh, the collaboration is, and uh, we believe that these partnerships will help support the Verone vehicles ecosystem development that we have uh, with with Verone. So, switching gears to that, I wanted to say a few words about. Uh, you know, our, our partnership, we're very excited to work with Verone Vehicles to explore uh, UAM opportunities in Latin America. Uh, the Verone team have laid out a, a roadmap with uh, really important ecosystem building blocks. And, uh, you know, this, this collaboration will provide opportunities for, for John Air Mobility to do uh, flight demonstrations, to be able to show our aircraft uh, the, all the features and capabilities that we, we mentioned uh, today, um, and, and also provide an opportunity to test uh, the integration of our aircraft uh, with uh, new airspace architectures and air traffic management systems uh, that Verone and other stakeholders are, are developing. Uh, they're we're going to see, you know, several UAM operational concepts that will be demonstrated and tested across different parts of, uh, in this case, Colombia and Latin America. Uh, and so we definitely want to see how our aircraft fits in with these various operational models or different CONOPS uh, uh, around these emerging Latin American uh, UAM uh, markets. Uh, and then finally, you know, this partnership will, will also provide uh, access to other regulatory authorities like the Colombian CAA that Verona is working closely with and, and will be helpful to understand the challenges that have uh, to be overcome uh, uh, from, from their perspective. So, uh, you know, as I said early in the, in the presentation, the future of air mobility is promising and, and definitely has a lot to offer. And we hope to get a chance to, to, to work closely with all the, the various stakeholders that are part of the skyscraper event. So I just wanted to end with, uh, you know, a picture of our, of our team and our joint technology demonstrator. And uh, again, we're excited to, to, to be part of this event. Uh, thank you again, Felipe and the Verone team uh, for giving us an opportunity to tell you our story, tell you our jaunt story. So with that, uh, we're, we're gonna end. Yeah, thank you, Simon, great. Yeah, I wanna again, you know, thank uh, Verone Vehicles for sponsoring uh, Skyscraper 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Martin.